Good morning all, I have post, so it's post bag. Okay, let's start with this one. It is of no commercial value. It's completely and utterly worthless. Big knife, which is also blunt, because I threw away those nasty plastic green ones. What have we got? Oh, it's another one of these. Oh no, it's two of these little DC to DC converters. So these are two tiny little devices, uh, Morn Sun B0505S. So I'm pretty sure they are five volts in, five volts out, uh, one W, so that's one watt. Now one watt at five volts is only 200 milliamps. Now I bought these a long time ago, so they've disappeared off my uh, history. But uh, this one looks favourite. It appears to have two of the Morn Sun ones. It's a good price and there are a lot sold. And I think what I'm going to do in future with these eBay uh, links is rather than link to the actual one I bought, I'm going to try and find a search string which uh, works well for these. So on this one I found 5 volt isolated converter. Um, I think that's probably going to be more used because the uh, there's lots of dust floating about because these uh, listings go out of date so quickly. After a while, they become uh, pretty useless. Uh, this particular listing only appears to be for one of these things, but it is the B0505S1W, DC to DC 5 volt power supply module, four pin isolated converter. So there's no connection between the two input pins and the two output pins, and that does have its uses. $1.32, free shipping from Love Cell 2013. Uh, not much detail in the data uh, below the pictures, but, uh, oh, what's that say about pieces? Oh yeah, one pieces. So there's no actual uh, wiring diagram. So maybe I'll type that into Google and see if we can get a, a wiring uh, connection diagram. And uh, yes, we have this. This is actually from another eBay listing. But we've got a B something 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 S dash one W and the connections are ground V in, V out minus and V out plus. Hmm, I wonder if I could wire that up now. Right, LED, a uh, high power one. What's the forward voltage of this LED? Is this thing going to tell me? Let's find out. Oh, testing. Uh, right, let's put it between pins one and three. Which way do you do it? This way. One and three. Is it going to see it as a diode? <laughs> it was pulsing. That's interesting. Uh, okay, so that's saying the forward voltage is 2.59 volts. That seems rather low. What colour was that? That's a white LED. 2.6. Yeah, that does seem rather low. Now I wonder what current they used. Ah, oh, well, no, it doesn't tell me. That's nanoamp, so that's reverse current. It's just that the forward voltage of an LED changes depending on how much current you put through it. I mean, it did light up, but it wasn't very bright. So maybe the forward voltage at higher currents would be higher. I thought these things were about three volts. I'm going to go for three volts. Uh, so five volts out minus three volts is two volts. I want 200 milliamps, two volts. Well, that's easy. I can work that out. It's 10 ohms, isn't it? So let's go substantially less than that because I don't really want to drive this at maximum. Uh, what's this? 39 ohms. So that'll be about 50 milliamps. So let's desolder one of these. That one looks like it could do with a bit more solder on there. Let's get the wire off. Okay. Let's cut the legs of this resistor down a bit so it's about the same length as that piece of wire. Okay, tin it. Now, resistors pass heat through fairly quickly, so I don't want to be holding this resistor for too long. Well, that seems alright. Solder that on there. Okay, let's connect that to the output of that converter. Right, four inner loops to give me five volts. Ground, I remember, was pin one. Pause was pin two. Will it light up? Yes, yeah, so that is working, putting 5 volts in, we're drawing about 50 milliamps out, and uh, this is a isolated power supply, so it should be going through a transformer in there. There should be no continuity between uh, the input and output pins of this device. 
That's just giving me an interesting idea. I wonder what the component tester would make of that. Uh, this is a bit naughty, really, because the component tester is not going to know what this thing is. But uh, let's just see what it says. Is it going to blow it up or itself up? Oh, that's interesting. It sees it as two diodes. Uh, or certainly a diode between one and two, and then two and three. Now, that's really weird, because if it's isolated, it should see nothing between two and three. Because one and two are the input, uh, three and four are the output. That should be completely isolated. Why is it seeing that? Let's flip it round. And that's saying not calibrated. Oh, okay, whatever. Okay, let's flip this round. See what it makes of that. Uh, just seeing it as more diodes. It doesn't look at pin 4, or at least, ah, actually pin 4 is a duplicate of pin 2. 1, 2, 3, 2. Ah, in that case I've connected the output to the input by virtue of the fact that both uh, those two pins are the same pin. Oh, that's got confusing now. Right, quick continuity check uh, between input and output pins. This is on continuity. I don't use this meter very often, and it doesn't seem to work. Oh dear, that's pretty grim, isn't it? That switch is all corroded, I think. Why doesn't it give me a constant buzzing? <laughs> right, I won't use that meter. Right, I'll use the Ryobi, but the continuity buzzer on this is so quiet, it's ridiculous. So continuity between the two input pins. No, there's nothing. How about the other way around? Nothing. Well, there's no continuity between any of the pins, so that doesn't really prove anything. How am I going to prove that the input of this is isolated from the output? I don't know. Right, I've had to do something nasty. Bend one of the pins up go back into the component tester just on uh, three of the pins. Let's try that and it should not be able to see anything. Right, yeah, so that's more like it. So all it's seeing is a capacitor on the two input pins. There probably is a capacitor across the input pins. The uh, output pin, which will be output ground, I think it is, uh, is not connected in any way. So it's um, not even bothered to mention it. So maybe that's good enough. Well, that was fun. Okay, what's next? This one. And this one says on the uh, outside of that packet, water quality tester. Can't quite remember why I bought this. I think I thought it would be fun to do a tear down. Oh, it comes in a nice little um, leatherette wallet. So, uh, yes, this is a water quality tester, a TDS and EC brackets hold, whatever all that means. Now, I got this one because it had a nicer display than the cheaper ones. I think this was about $6 or something. And it's measuring parts per million of something. Right, a little closer in on this display, we've got uh, four zeros PPM, parts per million. And that's saying uh, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So I guess uh, the temperature affects the reading. Actually, I could probably peel that uh, overlay off. Let's do that. Yeah, that hasn't helped hugely, but possibly a bit off. On. What's shift? Oh. Micro S per centimeter. Microseconds per centimeter. That's EC and ppm so it looks like there's two displays i suppose we ought to get some water really right glass of water um now i've got a feeling this is measuring something to do with hardness and we have very hard water um here so there's lots of um i don't know well it forms lots of lime scales so there's lots of calcium or something in it so there are two uh metal pins there and some weird domey thing. Is that porous? Is that going to allow water through in some way? Okay, well let's try measuring this water. Oh, 
we're getting a reading immediately of 296 parts per million of something. Time to read the manual, I think. Uh, unplug the electrode protective sleeve, I did that. Press the switch, place the electrode into the test solution. After it becomes stable, press the hold button and then take it out. Ah, yes, okay, that makes sense. So, 296. Now, why is the hold button right at the bottom? That's a bit dark. Right, hold button, now I can take it out. And the reading is held, 297, but 297 what? Right, the factory default TDS data. If the conductivity data of the solution is needed, please touch the shift button. The instrument automatically shifted. Huh? So I don't really know what this is doing. Uh, I'm probably going to have to read about this sort of thing to try and find out what it's actually telling me, but it's 297. Uh, there's a little pull-off cap on the top, and it looks like there's a, well, it's a lithium coin cell. It looks like it might be a CR2032. Uh, then there's an LCD, and then there's probably some circuitry. And then there's this sensor. I really don't know anything about this, and I can't even remember why I bought it. I just saw it, I think, and thought that would be quite fun for a teardown. But I've really got to learn what TDS and EC are. Well, I think I'll have to come back to this one another day. So this device can be found by searching for TDS EC tester and you could probably put the word water in there as well. It's come up as the second item, $6.99 and there are 27 sold from this seller. Let's go through to that. Uh, so yes, this one is uh, $6.99 free shipping from Lots Goods 88. Now, is there anything in the listing about what it actually does? can be used in uh, water purifiers and filters, food, vegetable, fruit and drink quality uh, to check the performance of your water filter to check for hardness. Ah, one grain equals 17 ppm. Yes, so I still need to do some reading about water hardness. Right, electronic parts uh, with a value of one US cent. Hmm, I'm worried already. Okay, let's see what it is. I think this might be one of my cheapy 50p things. Oh, it's a circuit board. But what is it? Oh, I think it's these um, little boost converters. Yeah, I think these are boost converters to take, oh, I don't know, 1.5 volts or something up to 5 volts. Uh, kind of power bank style, I suppose. Right, quick and dirty test. Uh, let's put one of these USB lights into one of these things. What's the resistor value on there? Uh, 390, so is that 39 ohms? I think it is, and then there's three of these in series, so it's going to need the full... No, they must be in parallel. They can't be in series, otherwise we'd be up at, uh, well, 8 or 9 volts. So they must be in parallel, 39 ohms. Okay, let's stick uh, 1.5 volts on there and see what happens. Right, uh, 1.2 volt battery in a little uh, holder. Negative is there, positive is there. Yes, that works, so that's boosting 1.2 volts up to 5 volts uh, for this USB light. I don't really like these battery holders. They these grippy arms are so grippy, you've got a devil of a job to get the cell out without destroying it. I don't like them at all. Out you come. Yeah, I mean, that's all chewed up now. Ruined my nice inner loop. Right, this item you can find with 5 volt or 5V booster USB. We got one here for 99 US cents. Lots and lots of these sold. Let's find out who's selling that. Oh, okay, this is actually who I bought it from. CZB672-1960. Uh, it's a 0.9 volts to 5 volts on the input, 5 volts on the output. DC to DC booster. Now, of course, this is non-isolated, so ground on the input is connected through to ground on the output, almost certainly. Uh, USB, mobile, step up, pass by, and all that stuff. Free shipping. Uh, let's just see if there's any data on this. 
not a lot, but you can put two AA batteries or one AA battery and get current of, oh, one AA battery will give you 200 to 300 milliamps on the five volts. Two AA batteries, you can push that up to 500 to 600 milliamps. Right, now this one just came through uh, today, I think it was. Yes, this one was today. And I'm intrigued, it's quite heavy. So what is it? Oh, some wire. Something in there. I've got a feeling I know what that is. And some more wire. Okay, let's take a look at what's in there. And I think this is one of these cheap... Oh, no, it isn't. It's not what I thought it was. Oh, it's all sorts of bits from Alice, I believe. Uh, what's that? Ah, yes, that's a current sensor. INA219 current sensor. Uh, now, you have to... External to the chip, you have to fit your own low value resistor, but of course, that's all fitted on this board. And I've got a feeling this is I squared C. Uh, what have we got here? A couple of hygrometers, I believe. Don't these come with batteries? That's be a shame if they don't. Uh, can't get that off at the moment. No, they don't supply batteries. That's a real, that's a real nuisance. So I presume they don't supply batteries for this one either. No, they don't. But they're probably um, ones that I have batteries. But these, yes, these are both hygrometers. That's uh, humidity sensors, measured between zero and one hundred percent humidity. And this is the Pit Kit Two, uh, which I want so that I can start my series on uh, microchip pick programming tutorials. Now the Pit Kit 2 was quite a bit cheaper than the Pit Kit 3. Uh, let's have a look at all this stuff on eBay. So uh, yes, this is all from Alice Womano 1983. Uh, the INA 219 bidirectional DC, bidirectional, that's interesting, DC current power supply sensor breakout module. Now I'm pretty sure you could find that from INA 219 module. I'll try that in a minute. Uh, $2.58 free shipping. Let's just try that search. Yes, INA219 module works for that. Now we've got this one, which is like the one I bought. But there's also this one, which is a slightly smaller form factor, purple PCB. Um, have we got one from Alice? Yeah, there's Alice there. Oh, that's actually that smaller one. A little bit more expensive because it's a smaller form factor. But yeah, that search string works. Right, the hygrometers, um, one of them is this one. Again, this is Alice 110 This was only $1.10. You can have black or white, I believe, free shipping. Now this one is hygrometer LCD should find that. Let's see if it finds the round one as well. Well, certainly LCD hygrometer finds this little uh, rectangular one but it doesn't seem to be finding the round one so let's take a look at that uh, well that one's also Alice this was two dollars thirty three free shipping uh, but it's described as digital cigar I'm not sure why cigars it's something to do with the cigar socket in your car uh, humidor is that Spanish or something hygrometer thermometer round black face so not entirely sure what you'd search for with that. Um, hygrometer round possibly might find that. Right, I've done a search for round hygrometer, and of course we're getting the uh, electronic one there. We're also getting some very nice, that's only $2.25, uh, mechanical ones. That one is interesting. It's got uh, temperature and humidity. What I wanted was one with the where the humidity was a larger display than temperature. That's why I particularly bought this because I'm more interested in humidity. But yeah, there are some quite interesting ones if you search for round hygrometer. Right, the bundles of wire are 10 meter uh, length, but it's quite thin. It's 24 AWG. I did want a uh, fairly thin wire, flexible, stranded. So it'll be a multi-strand, seven strands probably. And the colors are yellow, blue, red, black are there any other colors no red black yellow and blue okay the price is one dollar 32 which is pretty good for 
10 meters. I'll just strip a bit of that uh, off in a moment. Free shipping, Alice 110 1983. Let's have a quick look at this. See how thick it is. Okay, let's get in a bit uh, closer. Uh, so yeah, I don't think this is seven strand. Um, I think the next size up is 13 strand, if I remember correctly, but they're quite uh, stiff. These are, well, presumably tinned copper. Let's just compare it for a minute with the wire on the uh, battery box. Well, they're similar. Um, probably in terms of strands, the wire I just bought is quite a bit more substantial. Uh, the insulation's a similar size on both. But yeah, it's a bit thicker than I thought it was, which might be a problem. And uh, finally, let's take a look at this pit kit two. Ah, oh, that's sealed actually. Is there a tear thing? No, I'll have to cut that. Where's my knife? Here it is. Let's get this out. Right, now that you get a tiny little short USB, which I don't think is terribly practical, but that could be uh, useful for something, I don't know. You get uh, the six pin header. Now they're, they're female, but they've got uh, a male converter pushed into both ends, so it can be either male or female. That's actually quite versatile. And here's the programmer. Oh, it's a bit rattly. Now, of course, it's not a genuine microchip one. There's no microchip logo. These are actually clones. I wonder how easily that case will come off. That's certainly rattling around a bit. Right, that actually came apart really easily. These uh, lugs don't seem to be very tight. All right, is that going to come out? Yeah. So there's the board. Now that's interesting. Uh, obviously there's a PIC on here. Uh, it's a PIC 18F2550. I assume it's been chosen because it's um, got USB functionality. A little um, inductor there, so that's going to be some sort of step up or step down voltage generator. Ah, probably step up because I've got a feeling that VPP um, is a higher voltage, there's VPP, the top connector there, is actually a, a higher voltage than 5 volts. So that's probably the step-up generator for that high voltage. But what are these three devices? Right, it looks like these are memory. 24LC512 and, oh, come on. Uh, yeah, another 24LC512. So a couple of serial memory chips. That's uh, a polyfuse down there, the five something five and this one here is just an op amp it's an lm358 i think lm358 is an op amp the crystal it looks like it's a 20 megahertz so yeah that's what's on this clone pit kit to board um so i mean should work shouldn't it should work fine i'd have thought now, as I remember it, um, Alice had the best price on this clone pit kit too, $8.45 free shipping. And this makes buying this and also buying the little um, pick demo board viable. It's, it's really quite affordable. And then we can start this tutorial on um, programming pick microcontrollers. Um, let me just see whether pick kit 2 on its own brings up these clone ones. And uh, yeah, just searching for Pit Kit 2 on eBay.com. We've got China, Hong Kong, Malaysia. Um, these seem to have be sort of bigger kits with the zero insertion force, the ZIF socket. Uh, what I'm looking for is something around $8. Uh, so yeah, that one there, $8.97. Uh, clearly also a clone, although that looks like it might have a logo. <laughs> Let's have a quick look at that one because what's that logo that's interesting oh it's a sort of w with mp lab ide hmm that's interesting so i think what i'm going to do with these uh listings is i'll put the link to the listing that i actually purchased but i'll also put a, a link as well to a generic search term for the item because 
these links go out of date as I say and uh, the generic searches won't go out of date so I think that's probably uh, something I need to add as well as the specific links to the items I buy. Right one more um, because this one actually says on the other side pick it three so I think this is and is it red? Yeah, so this is the pit kit three. Again, uh, unbranded, this is a clone. Right, this one didn't come from Alice um, because Alice has this, but it was a bit more expensive. So I just found the cheapest one I could. Comes with a, a longer uh, mini USB cable and also this male, female, male, any combination uh, six pin cable. Let's see if we can get this one apart. Uh, well, these certainly seem to be coming from the same manufacturer. They're absolutely identical. I've got a feeling, though, that the Pit Kit 3 is a fair bit more complicated inside. I'm going to open them both back up again. Right, well, the Pit Kit 3 has a much uh, larger chip, larger certainly in terms of the number of pins on it. Uh, interestingly, that has a 12 megahertz crystal. This had what I think is a 20. Um, I'm pretty sure these chips are those memories again. And that's the LM358 again. There is a little more in the way of sort of devices down here. I'm not entirely sure what these SOT23 six pins are. There's a bit of a strand of something over there. Is that metallic? I'm not sure. No, I think it's just a, a whisker of flux or something. But does look a bit worrying. I'll have a closer look at that in a minute, but certainly the uh, pick on here. Let me see if I can uh, find out what those are. Oh, lighting's a bit off. Let me just readjust that. Yeah, the pick at three seems to have a pick 24FJ256 in it. And then this one was, uh, we've looked at it before, a pick 18F2550. So yeah, really not major differences, um, but there is a difference in the controller in there and a few other bits and pieces down here. Uh, so for the tutorials, I'll probably be using mainly the Pit Kit 2 because it's just that much more affordable. I've got a feeling this was about $11. Have a look at that just in a moment. Um, yeah, these just clip together pretty easily. Make sure you get the uh, push button through the hole there. Hmm. I say easily. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Right, so the Picket 3 that I bought uh, came from Moon River 1980. $11.93. Uh, does not ship to United Kingdom. That's weird because that's the one I bought. So let's take a look at Alice's Pit Kit 3. Uh, yeah, Alice's Pit Kit 3 is $13.05, so it's just a little more expensive, a dollar and a bit. And now you can also see um, in that search in Alice's listings, this is the board that I'll be using, this um, 12F675 development board. So it'll probably be Pit Kit 2 in conjunction with this board. Now, some people said, why did I take off this JST connector? So maybe I'll have a look out for uh, a six pin JST and uh, solder a six pin header on there so that you don't have to modify the boards. Probably easier if I don't modify it. I'll buy another one of these, I think. That seems like a good price. I'm sure I paid $10 for mine. So yes, when I start these tutorials, I'll probably use uh, an unmodified one of these boards, JST six pin connector to this arrangement, um, 12F675, which I won't erase because there's something actually programmed in the 12F675. Uh, when you get it from the factory, by erasing it, you delete that. It's in the very last location of memory. Look it up if you want to know what that is. So yes, I'll probably use that uh, in conjunction with the pit kit too. So this is quite affordable. This was about, what, eight and a half? This was about seven and a half, is it? What's that? Two eights of 16. So about $16 to buy all the kit you need to program these microcontrollers. So all this stuff is today's post bag. Now I've got to uh, sit down and find all the links and work out all these search terms for all this stuff. Anyway, cheerio.